What is up, my fellow pickler? Today, I'm going to be sharing with you the top five most essential drills that you absolutely need to be doing to improve your game every single day. Be sure to stick around until the end because I'm going to be sharing with you the number one drill that you need to do in order to 10x your game. How do I know it will 10x your game? Well, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Austin and I'm a 5.5 ranked doubles and singles player. And these are the exact drills that I have been using to take my game from 4.0 to 5.5. So I know that it will also work for you. Alrighty, that brings us to drill number one, which is the half court dink duel. The way that this drill works is both players start opposite the net from each other on either non-volley zone line. And what they're going to do is begin a dink rally back and forth. And the only restriction on this drill is that you can only hit dinks. So you can't speed up balls. You can't hit lobs. Everything has to land either inside the kitchen or on the non-volley zone line in order to count. So the best way to play is to play games to five and play in all four positions. So you're going to be playing to five. You can either do win by two or win by one. And let's say you start cross court from each other. So let's say it's even side to even side or right side to right side. You guys will play a game to five. Next round, you guys will play a game to five from the odd side to the odd side or the left side to the left side of the court. Next game is going to be down the line. So your even side to their odd side. And then the last game is down the line from your odd side to their even side. So it ends up being four rounds. If it ends up being tied, you guys can do a deciding match. And I recommend recommend doing that deciding match cross court with each other because majority of your dinks should be cross court. So really honing in the cross court dink is going to be more beneficial than honing in a down the line dink. That brings us to drill number two, which is a volley drill. And it's called the figure eight drill. The reason that it's called the figure eight drill is because you're actually creating a figure eight with you and your partner slash opponent, depending on however you want to frame that. Anyways, the way that it works is you guys begin across the net from each other on either non-volley zone line, and you guys are going to be creating a figure eight with each other. And the way that that works is one person is going to be hitting across the body of their opponent, while the other person strictly hits down the line uh, on their opponent, and then you guys will switch roles throughout the drill. So best way to think about it is if I am person A and you are person B, as person A, I'm going to be hitting across the body from you, uh, to you, my opponent. So each shot that I hit, I'm going to be hitting cross. So if it's a forehand, I'm going to be hitting it across your body. If it's a backhand, I'm going to be hitting it across your body. Whereas all you have to focus on is hitting everything down the line. So if you have a backhand, you're going to hit that down the line. You're not going across my body. If you have a forehand, you're going to hit that down the line. You're not going across my body. And then it will automatically create this figure eight. The reason that this is an essential volley drill is because it helps you guys to be able to hit the right locations. And so often, especially with beginner, intermediate, and a lot of the time with advanced players too, it's hitting the right location that becomes so difficult. So this really helps you to be able to get that muscle memory, get that knowing where your paddle is in the air so that you can be able to place that at the right angles to hit the the correct location. So what I recommend doing with this drill is you guys will set a timer to challenge yourselves so that you guys can get some of that in-match pressure. So you'll set a timer, 30-second countdown. You guys could do 10 seconds to start. It all depends on your level. Sometimes I go up to five minutes, right? where I'm trying to keep the ball in the air. As soon as the ball bounces, it's dead, and the point becomes you you start over. But let's say for this example, it's a 30-second timer. I'm going to start it from 30 seconds, counting down, and then the alarm is going to go off after 30 seconds. So I click start. We begin our rally. The goal is to keep the ball alive in that formation, in that figure eight formation for that amount of time. Once we do that, we switch roles and do it again. Switching roles, meaning instead of me, now as player A, going across your body, I'm going to be hitting everything down the line. Okay, essential drill number three is called Slinky. Go, Slinky, go! And the way that this drill works, it's for drops and for dinks. And it helps you to be able to transition into the net, which in every point in pickleball, we're transitioning into the net. 
That's the whole point. Once we can make it up there, we've overcome a huge obstacle. I know that I've played against so many opponents where it's like I try to transition forward and I end up losing the entire game just because we could not get to the net. So this this drill helps you to get the reps in necessary to be able to overcome that. So the way that Slinky works is player A is going to be starting behind the baseline and player B on the opposite side of the net is going to be starting behind the non-volley zone line. So player A uh, will feed in the ball and typically what I like to do is hit in a hard, a nice hard uh, serve, which ends up being a drive, right? Pretty hard, probably about 70% to get the point started. That way it's not just player B, you know, like feeding in an overhead or something like that because that, that would make that transition extremely difficult for the purposes of today. Not saying that wouldn't be a great drill to do as you advance, right, where they could be hitting overheads at you. So player A feeds in a, a relatively hard drive uh, serve, and then the whole goal is to get up to the net. And player B's goal is to keep them back as much as possible. So as soon as the, the point starts, player A is trying to transition. In any given point, you receive a point each time that you transition forward, meaning each time that you make it to the non-volley zone, you get a point. And then your goal is to transition back. And this is one that gets people sometimes, they're like, why would I want to practice transitioning back? Well, in pickleball, it happens all the time where you need to be able to transition back to stay in the point. Say someone lobs you. Say you accidentally pop the ball up and someone's going to hit an overhead. You're going to have to back up in order to hit the next uh, shots in and get back into the point. So you receive one point for transitioning to the non-volley zone line in any given rally. Another point for transitioning back to the baseline. You could realistically win the entire game. You're going to be playing to five. You could realistically make five transitions all in one go and win the game right there. But player two now gets an opportunity to tie or pass you up. So you want to get as many transitions as you can. You can go as high as, you know, 100, right, in a row. And then it'd be player two's job to try to get to 100. But you're playing to five. Anytime that you miss, you switch roles. So I, as player A, or player, I think we're doing A and B, right, not one and two, but... I, as player A on the baseline, if I transition forward and get a point, and then I'm in my transition backward and I miss, now player B is going to go all the way to the baseline, and now it's their turn to try to transition forward. So the only way that you can score points is if you are the player that's on the baseline. Okay, that brings us to drill number four. This is a drive drill, and this is definitely a more basic drill, but it's one of my favorite drills because... It helps you to be able to get the reps in that you need. And so what this drill is, is it's down the line drives. Literally as simple as that. But you can do this drill in many different ways. You can either be hitting strictly just forehands, strictly backhands. You could be hitting alternating forehands and backhands. Whatever it is that you want to do. Or you could just be hitting at at totally random. But the reason that it's down the line is because you have less court aiming down the line than you do cross court. So if you can hone in down the line, you'll be able to hit the cross court angle so much easier because I want to say you have like three or four more feet. It could be more, it could be a little bit less when you're going cross court than if you're going down the line. So the way that the drill works is you want to try to keep the ball alive for as long as you possibly can. So you guys can set a timer just like how we did with the earlier drill. You can either set a timer uh, that challenges you. Maybe that's a minute trying to keep the ball alive. Um, Or it could be, you know, 10 seconds just depending on your level. So you have to figure out what that is. And my best piece of advice for you guys is to pick a number that makes you stretch, but that isn't impossible. So you want to be stretching uh, to hit these goals every single time. And what it's going to come down to with this drill is just getting the reps in. Okay, that brings us to our final and fifth drill, and I hope that you guys have enjoyed this so far. This is my absolute favorite drill that I like to do because it encompasses what all the things that you would do in a pickleball match or a recreation game, plus it helps you to be able to feel all that match pressure. So many of you have probably done this, many of you probably haven't, but the name of this drill is Skinny Singles. And the way that it works is both players stand uh, just behind the baseline from each other. 
And they're going to be playing half court, a game of singles just on that half half of the court. And this really helps you to hone in your doubles game because you, all your whole goal is is to cover your half of the court if they hit it to the other half of the court. Obviously, your partner would be there. But since your partner's not, they can't, and that would be out. The way that I like to play the game is anything that any legal, any shot that I can get to, I'll play. Meaning if it is on my partner's side and I can run over there and get to it, I'm going to play it. If I absolutely can't reach it, it's automatically my point. But I'm going to put in all the effort that I can to try and get there to place that ball in because I'm not going to become worse as a result of doing that. I'm only going to become better. So you'll see, I'll play with some people that'll be like, out, 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 right? As soon as it goes slightly onto their partner's side. And it's like, fair enough. That's, I, I guess that is the rule, right? But if you guys can just establish before, hey, let's play anything that we can possibly get to. So you'll play with people, like I was saying, that are just super serious about the lines, right? And no, 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 that's out. It's like, you're only going to get better if you just play every single ball that you can possibly reach. So like I said, you're going to be starting on either side of the baseline from each other across the net. If your score is even, you're going to be serving from the even or right side. If your score is odd, you're going to be serving from the odd or left side of the court. You can only score a point if you are serving. So you start, typically what you do is north side serves first. For those of you that don't know, every pickleball court, except for the ones that were built incorrectly, face north and south. So that should be pretty easy to pick the north side unless you're facing west and east, which is pretty rare. There's not very many courts that do that because then the sun is constantly in your eyes on one side. Kind of an interesting thing. Anyways, starting on opposite sides of the baseline, you serve in the ball and you're going to play out the point. Any legal shot goes. Remember, you have to let that third shot bounce before you can hit your third shot. And then you transition into the net and you're just playing out points can only score if you are serving, like I said before. If I score while I'm serving, I'm at zero, I win the point, I will then go to the odd or left side, and I will be serving from odd side to the even side. Because their score is zero, they stay on the even side. So you, what's great about this drill is you guys are going to be playing down the line, you're going to be playing cross court, so you're going to be getting all of the different angles that you would get in an actual match. So just to reiterate, you can only score when you serve. If your score is odd, you're going to be serving from the odd side and receiving from the odd side. If your score is even, you're going to be receiving and serving from the even side. If my score is two, I'm going to be serving from the even side. If my score is three, I'm going to be returning and serving from the odd side or left side of the court. My new app, Pickleball Playbook, just came out. And with this app, you guys will have access to tons of different trainings that will be able to help you improve at your level. So there is a free version. It'll give you a new drill every single week. And then there's also the pro version that's just the price of a couple of pickleballs a month. And it'll give you guys access to drills at your level. So if you're a beginner, it'll have beginner drills, intermediate or advanced. That way, if you're advanced, you're not doing drills that are way too easy for you and vice versa if you're a beginner. So go ahead, download the app. I'll leave it in the description at the very top of the description. You guys can download it and start improving today.